Greetings to everyone who is watching this. This is a documentary for our English language awareness subject made for our lecturer Puan Fatin Dalila. This documentary is prepared by three students of the English language awareness subject and our names are Fahmi, Izzat and Daniel. This documentary serves as our final project for the subject. For our documentary, we decided to make a documentary about mosque. We want the mosque around Clanton to be more known for its charms and uniqueness. With Without further ado, let's get the documentary started. For our first mosque, we have Masjid Al Ismaili located in Pasir Pekan, Kelantan. For our second mosque, we have the Beijing Mosque located near the border between Kelantan and Thailand in Rantau Panjang. First mosque that we choose to present to you, Masjid Pasir Pekan. This mosque is mostly white in color, with traces of yellow here and there. This mosque has six minarets, ensuring that everyone will hear the azan. There is a special gate that is only used for the royalties during the Friday prayers. The royalties will come and park their vehicles here. This is the area for taking ablutions. There is a water reservoir as well as water taps for convenience's sake. The water taps for ablutions here are equipped with sensors. This makes it easier for people to take ablutions. This is the main praying hall. The chandelier hanging from the ceiling really gives the most a classic feeling. For Friday sermons, also known as Kutbah, this is where the khatib will sit while delivering the sermon. The imam for prayers will pray here. And this is where the holy Qurans are kept. This is the mosque office, but it appears that it's closed today. The windows are tinted to prevent outsiders from seeing the inside of the office. There is also a medical center for dialysis treatment situated within the mosque ground. While this mosque isn't very unique, it is by no means small. In fact, many people come here during Friday prayers. And for our second mosque, this is the Beijing Mosque. This mosque's official name is Masjid Jubli Perak Sultan Ismail Petra. This mosque is located around Taupanjang, Kelantan. What makes this mosque unique is its Chinese-inspired design used as the main motive for the mosque. 
This MOS is based on New G MOS, which is located in Beijing. The New G MOS is the oldest MOS in Beijing. As we can see, the Chinese design is used in almost every corner of the mosque. This gives the mosque a distinctive appearance, infusing Muslims' place of worship with designs of Chinese origin. This is the Beijing Mosque Minaret. This mosque minaret, like any other minaret, is equipped with speakers for azan. Compared to other mosque minarets, this minaret is not very tall, but it still fulfills its purpose spectacularly. This is the place used to take ablution, a necessary requirement for a Muslims before praying. There are two sources of water, which is either from taps or from a large water reservoir called a kola. There are also water taps around the mosque, such as near the mosque gate. There are doors from two sides for people to enter the praying hall. Some of the signs here contains Chinese language, such as this sign. This is the main praying hall. It can hold around 600 people inside for praying. For Friday prayers, people will pray at the secondary praying area, which is under the sun since it doesn't have a roof. The praying hall has open gaps at the ceiling. Sometimes birds can be seen flying through under the ceiling. The view it provides is very beautiful as long as the birds don't shit inside. The praying hall uses the color green as its main color. The color green is also Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's favorite color, making this choice of color suitable for a place of worship for Islam. This mosque also has a mini library. It is presumably used by scholars staying at this mosque to find and read books or do a revision. At last, it appears that the library is not open today, or maybe it is not open to the public. The mosque here sells bottled water. Buyers are to put their money in a metal box before taking the water. Even though people can just take the water without paying, the mosque trusts the people who come to mosque that they won't do such a thing. We manage to chat with the regular of the mosque. He comes to the mosque before Asar and we go home after Isha prayers every day. We decided to ask him a question about the mosque. What is the average number of people who come to the mosque every day? There are many vendors who sell near the mosque gate. They usually come by bike, trying to earn their keep. Since the mosque is a popular site that often get visitors, selling here is a quite profitable. We managed to secure yet another interview with an ice cream vendor who was about to go home for the day. In exchange, we need to buy one of his ice cream, which actually tastes pretty good. How much profit do you usually get every day? Are your customers mainly Kelantan customers or Thailand customers? What is ice cream pulu called in Thailand? Ice cream pulu. 
Uh, ali eh, eh mali ya pangai es krim pulu ali Thailand ya pangai item kau ni uh. What time do you usually start and end your business every day? Ah, saya mari pukul 8 pagi. Ah. Mari jua pukul 5 saya balik. We appreciate the friendly ice cream vendor for his willingness to answer our question. There are few wooden huts for people to sit. Located around the parking area, some people buy foods and drink from the vendors to eat them here. The mosque is really spectacular and unique, even from the behind. It is still looks beautiful. There are many different angles that highlight the Chinese design of the mosque. Even when the sun's about to set, the mosque is still ever so radiant. This brings us to the end of our documentary about the Beijing Mosque.